the McDonald's. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. We've got lots of topic shows, the whole shebang. With your, fa- I'm going to say you're the favorite girl because we can't uh, upset we, Chris. Oh, we can't upset. So Chris. it's Sarah Colony, you guys. But then welcome people are, back. People what? are going to be like, "No, Fortune's my favorite." Like it's okay. I know that everyone has a favorite. It's fine. Let's just say I'm one of the favorites. It's, you're one of the favorites. People have been asking. <laughs> I'm glad to have you back. I know it's been forever. It's it been a like... hot girl summer. You were in Canada. <laughs> oh, it's hot there too. It's hot everywhere. Now, how are you able to? I thought people couldn't go in and out of Canada. Oh, let me tell you something. I was so stressed the first time I went. So you can go starting. For people that don't know, she married a foreigner. I did. And because he needed a green card. <laughs> Basically, we were 90 Day Fiance before 90 Day Fiance oh, was You're not... so bummed I would've, we would've... that that wasn't happening when you guys met. I know. We could have been the one that, like, I was going to his football games. And, and you guys then... are still together. Yeah. And then I would have been like, why don't you have a visa yet? You've been here for 12 years. <laughs> but Is he a citizen now? He is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he got okay. his permanent green card. Did so you have to he, take the test? No, he just got his permanent green card, not okay. not a citizen. He's still a Canadian citizen. But can he be both? Um, I think he could be, but I don't see, I mean, okay. I don't see the reason, really. Just, it would be the nice, <laughs> it could probably get you a people article. Oh, that's true. Show you at home studying with him. Hmm. I put glasses on for it, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. You're welcome. Why aren't you my You're publicist? welcome. I'm thinking about everything. Okay. Well, if you get a reality show, that certainly would be the main storyline. That's true. I mean, yeah. Heather Dubro from Real Houses of OC did a whole thing about adding Dubro to her name, and the girl ate the cake. Oh, that's she broke right. Broke off the yeah. cake, remember? Anyway, so you're in Canada to get some old dick at this point. You've been yeah. How many years? It's been, it'd been a while before I got any. I mean, it'd been a minute because he went in the end of June. He's yeah. playing football up there now. If people yeah. don't know that. So it didn't open till August 9th, but the week before that, I wanted to be at his first game. And they said, I went through this whole questionnaire and they were like, you can come in because you're the spouse of a Canadian citizen. You just have to provide all this information. Right. And then it's still up to the border agent. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to get the guy that's like not in the mood that day or whatever. Like yeah. I was prepared. Well, they I bring, they tell me to print off my marriage license, my a copy of his passport, everything. I like he just kind of looks at everything and then I hand him my marriage license and he goes, okay. And then he just goes, go on. Like you were bragging? Well, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I this, you asked for this, but they like it just was less stressful. So do they ask for your vaccination card yeah, and all ask that? for okay. my vaccination card. And did then you I, have to take a COVID test to get in? I had to take one to get in. Okay. I had to take one upon arrival. Okay. Online. Uh huh. Over the phone where she could see me. And then you shove it up your nose? Yeah. Oh, so it, that you're not shoving it up into a non-infected yes, nose? Yes, it's basically... Oh, it's just like a drug pee like test. Like a pee test. Like, I need a fresh nostril. Yes. The Who John... has a fresh nostril? <laughs> John said... Oh, my God. It was like his pee test for the NFL, where someone oh. actually stands there and makes sure. Oh, okay. But the best part, I was putting it up my nose, and she... And the lady... I couldn't see her, but she could see me, and so she was typing the instructions. So she, she starts typing, deeper, deeper, and I'm like... This is getting really weird. It was like porn COVID sex test or something. It was so weird. But So um, Peter and I are doing a special project. I guess I won't say what it is. Why? Um, I don't know. I always feel like you can't say. It's just like a, it's a, I'll just say this. It's a thing that it's the first time we've been asked to do something really together of any sort of couples. It's um, like a reality situation? No, it's like a one-off like game show type of thing. Oh, this is exciting. Um, Family feud. That involves cooking. I'll say that. Involves cooking. Oh my god, is it on is it uh, that like the worst cook the fa- the on on um no. chopped? No. <sighs> I really would I'm rather so be a judge, but I'm cooking something. So anyway, we're excited to do it. And so they had to send the test to us. And anything like that First, first of all, any sending anything FedEx scares me because I have post traumatic stress from putting the return address, and then the thing came to me and not the person. Oh, okay. So I have like well, that's any, a new problem. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very stressful. So I'm like, and then to do the test, you know, I'm like reading the directions and I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up because it's got to be this quick turnaround time. And when you do squish it up in your nose, I immediately sneeze. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it went. We'll hopefully we're clean, and we'll go do this thing. Um, I think you're probably fine. I've, yeah. I've, I had. I mean, they make you take a lot to do all these things. Yeah. I mean, but it's, it's important. Totally right. fine. Totally yeah. Important. Yeah. I don't care. You know. And if I don't, 
And if we're not clean, then okay, glad I didn't go, you know, whatever. But I, mean, we're both I wish you could tell. When we'll can see. you tell us about the cooking thing? I love a cooking show. I don't know. I don't know that it's a secret. I don't know. It's it just, it's something, it's a competition. Hopefully they play it. Hopefully yeah, hopefully, we pass, hopefully we pass it over. We get up there and do it. Okay. Um, you know, it was kind of last minute, which always tells me somebody better dropped out, which is how I get every job, and that's okay. That's also fine. Yeah, that's also girl. fine, yeah. One of my so, friends got a part on Hacks because, like, the day of, and he was like, they called him, and he's like, I'm pretty sure I was the COVID backup because what if, because it was so last minute. They were like, can you be on set in an hour? Oh, my God. I just had a great movie idea. What? If we ever want to relive COVID, oh. which I don't know that we do, or maybe this is happening. But you know how, like, in acting and stuff, there's those movies about how someone, like, you know, tries to trip the person so they get the part or the, you know, they, the, um, what do you call it? The backup. The, what You just said it. The uh, understudy. The understudy wants the part. So then, you know, all of a sudden she puts some gross thing in the, in the lead's food so she could have a moment. What if someone is like, I guess you can't really infect someone with COVID, but trying to infect, infect someone with COVID so that they test negative or switching the test. Oh, like you switch just, the test. Like what That's if you what just you have do. like a COVID person that you just are like, hey, there's a COVID person. They're quarantined at this place. Uh, switch the nostril test with that person. Get it. Switch it. Then that person's out. I have the lead in the in the show. I would watch that movie. And I would also be in that movie because someone <laughs> got COVID and I got to star in it. So your friend was the non-COVID. Yeah, I, I think he thinks so. He doesn't okay. really know, but he was like, I got a call to be on set and like – I hadn't. I don't think he had read for it, but they knew him, the casting or something. So he was like, "The only good thing that's come out of COVID is that for struggling actors, they're finally getting like handed a couple parts that they really don't weren't really meant to have." Right, and I think sometimes, <laughs> he, to be fair, he works a lot. I won't call him okay. the struggle, but right, the rather, but I'm just saying. Yeah, and I think it's there, like a little lottery, like a little, like a little throw you a bone here. Yeah, there. well, yeah. I think they're even. They were even doing. Somebody told me for commercials, they were like casting a COVID backup and paying that person oh at least a fee to be on hold in case someone got COVID. Oh, my God. So you're you know right. What that reminds so me of? I'm going to jump to a story that I was going to I, by the way, got no acting work in... during COVID. <laughs> I mean, I I backup the, or not. I got The Bachelor, which I will tell you about, but wait. Where... Oh, my God. You were so good on that, too. Are you doing Bachelor in Paradise, yeah, too? Okay. I want to show you this thing. Um, the, I This is a YouTube video that's out called Eight to Go that I did eight years ago that I completely forgot about. And the reason I want to say it's a backup is because it involved a cat and there was a hero cat and a backup cat, like in case the cat just like wasn't feeling it. They have like another professional cat. The story behind this is I'm at Chelsea lately, right? Because it was eight years ago. So towards the end of Chelsea lately. And my manager at the time calls me and goes, um, hey, there's there might be a job for you. It's a you know, it's a YouTube video, but it's kind of a big deal. It pays really well. It tells me what it pays. And he's like, and you have a cat, right? Like, wink, wink. We've, I've never had a cat. We've never discussed having a cat. And I go, I'm assuming they want a celebrity with a cat. And he's like, because you have a cat, right? It's like just a weird lying thing on the phone. I'm like, okay, I have a cat. Yeah. So I book Where the thing. Where are you thing. supposed to get one? So I come home and I tell Peter, like, this is the amount of money we have to get a cat. The kids, which we've never had a pet at this point, we're like the family that got the kids first and then never got the pet. And they're all like, we're so excited. We want a cat. We want a cat. So Peter's like, we'll get a cat. So the kids are all excited. And then he goes, oh, I talked to my friend. We can borrow this cat. And he sends me a photo of the cat. Then I talk to the people <laughs> and they're like, well, we really want to use, and I like created a name, like, cuddles or whatever oh, they're that's like we really want to mm -hmm. use cuddles um and you we absolutely can but if you prefer for any reason we have like a professional cat that acts and i was like <laughs> oh yes let's just use the professional cat because just like a mother with like a child star i don't want my kid to like not be in the mood that day and much prefer for a professional cat right so i'm like you guys we don't need the cat then the kids are crying you said we could have a cat and then we did. We got a cat. We got Simba like a year later or something. Or not a year, like a, like a couple weeks later. But in the meantime, I go to do this job, and it's a one-day thing. Now, the reason it came back to me about this thing I did with this cat is I'm out with my friend on Friday night, 
and we're in Malibu and we're watching Sex and the City the movie at this like place called Rafi Lounge. They have like a nighttime movie thing. Okay. And I was like, want to go? And it's the original, like the one that I oh, know. Every... Yeah. Anyway, I started to do every line of the movie. There's only about 30 people there. And I thought the people behind me would enjoy it, that I knew every line, you know, like, <laughs> you know, like Kim Cattrall doing all this stuff. And then, and then Sarah Jessica Parker. And like, I just knew every single line. And then I realized, oh, maybe these people that are younger than I am have never seen Sex of the City, the first movie. And my oh. friend is like, I think you're kind of ruining it. Anyway, she goes, this guy that I met on a dating site wants, like, they have never met. She's like, he's in Malibu. Do you care if he comes by? And I'm like, no, have him come by. He comes by. He's like, I directed you in the, that cat video. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, my God, I totally forgot it. So then they, like, kind of hit it off. And I go, can you send me the video? So I watch the video. I don't even know what this was for. It wasn't for a cat food or anything. But the funniest part is, so I was kind of scared of cats. I was not a cat person. <laughs> and the cat was a famous cat. It was the cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It was, like, 15, still working. Did you get its autograph? <laughs> <laughs> the two women that, came, that were the cat handlers were exactly what you'd think. Oh. A couple. Yeah. Lesbians. Yeah. Sensible shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Just, and uh, they don't, by the way, they don't like PETA. Because oh. I guess PETA doesn't want cats to, like, work. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest conversation I've ever had in my life. Okay. No, I'm scared. I would, you know, I'm like, oh, and the cat senses I'm not a cat person. The cat's been around the block. Yeah. But I did, like, it was... The he star knows. of a hit show. Yeah, he's been on the red carpet. Meanwhile, the hero cat's just waiting, hoping that cat gets COVID and dies. Because it's like, I never get to work. I'm just the cat that looks just like the one that does work. So that cat's just sitting like, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of sad, you know? And so like the stand-in, but for a cat. And they're like, this is the hero cat. This is the backup cat. And the two, and the women start talking to me, and they're like, and the cat's like not coming towards me. Because this, this clip that I have, the picture that I have that I'm showing you right now, it, it, it's me on the ground and the cat was supposed to come to me and it wouldn't come to me. And they're like, sure you got a cat at home? I fucking like trickled a little pee. I'm like, if I get fired off this job, I mean, this was like a lot of money. Chelsea's lately is ending. I'm like, yeah, cuddles. We've had cuddles for like, well, I don't know, six, seven years. I'm just like freaking out. My heart's beating. And they're like, uh, and the director who's totally nice, now hopefully dating my friend, is like, yeah, we need the cat to come to her. And and they're like, you know, do your cat noise. And I was like, I don't even know what I, I do for a cat. Like, I think... <laughs> but I don't even do, now that I am a cat lady, I don't even do that. So I'm like, oh, do, do, do. And so they're like. Uh, oh, these ladies were so mad at you. This has never happened with whatever this cat's name is. And the cat, we had the cat flush a toilet. We had a cat be on a DJ thing. It was it was about a cat that was a DJ that wanted to play with dead mouse and then had a, a catnip problem. That's what the video was about. What was this for? I like... don't know. It's just like a spoof. It's called Eight to Go Look It Up. It has oh, like 134,000 views, but not a I lot. Home. I don't think whatever they paid me, they paid me too much. Okay. <laughs> and so they're like, so the cat. The cat, they're like, the cat's ready to flush the toilet. The cat can do everything, but the cat is just, like, not into me. So they're like, I go, well, maybe if we put some, like, food, like, in my bra as I'm in this robe, the cat would come to me. And they're like, we'll try it, you know. She's she's not one that just goes for food. She's a professional cat. She's a sag she cat. She knows not to eat, on, yeah. yeah, in between breaks. So finally, we get that she clip done. I was so fucking terrified of these women that they were going to find out that I was really not a cat person. I mean, but I, I feel like instead of, I mean, I would have been nervous too, yeah. but I would have just been like, I mean, it's obviously the cat's problem. Like, this is not my problem. I have 80 cats at home. Like, why are you blaming me? I just me? feel like the cat had been like a, the cat had a lot more experience than I am on right. set. Like, I, <laughs> the fact that they even asked me to do this, again, I'm sure someone with a cat got something better and bailed. I'm sure Tracy Ellis Ross was supposed to be doing it or something, and she <laughs> got a, a big show. I don't know. Somebody better, obviously, and I was the bad I used to have a cat. I never got a phone call for this for this gig. Ugh. But anyway, it was scary. <laughs> have you ever lied about something to do a show, and then it's like you found out that you're like 
they're finding out that you're like not a great rollerblader. Or I whatever. remember like in the, yeah, I uh, back in the beginning like yeah. for commercials or stuff, remember they always have to use to like list all your talents or something. <laughs> and I was like, sure, I can play volleyball and and oh, swim yes. and surf and one day they were like, "Oh, we have this surfing thing." And I was like, "I can't surf." And they were like, "Well, it's it's checked on your like, you know, thing on LA casting or whatever." And I was like, "Oh, I better go and check that cuz I can't surf." Yeah, that's like, a pretty hard one to fake. Yeah. Mine was um <laughs> hip hop dancing, but I felt like I could kill it. Right. Mm. But probably not. <laughs> no. What am I, J Lo? Like, I mean, what was I thinking? Well, I feel like we we all checked all the dancing boxes because you're just like, I didn't say I was professional. I just said I could do like the cabbage patch or something. And then we all, you all had to lie on your resume. So you just say you like did all these different plays and short films and stuff that you knew that they would never find out if they're true. No, there's no way. I mean, you could just make up a theater company. They never heard of it. I know. Those are, that, was, that was always fun when we were trying to build each other's, you know, resumes up. Yeah. I really want to see like I had shot with you and a cat now just to be like, just People for your so lucky. They just have to just be like, this is my Instagram. This is my TikTok. I have enough followers hire me or don't because I make so much money on my own I don't need your stupid bold three commercial or whatever that's true they don't really care anymore all right I'm gonna go to some other topics here let's get going um oh wait we are gonna talk about speaking of your career you have something exciting happening yeah I'm gonna do uh the designing women reboot as a play um it's the you know the original the woman who created it Linda Bloodworth who is amazing and her husband's directing it and it's in Arkansas which is my it's actually in my hometown so it's just this weird it's like I can't believe it's there. Do you think they knew that you were from Arkansas when they were pursuing you? I don't know I'm not sure. Did someone in Arkansas get COVID? Um yes that's what (laughs) happened well my friend Liz Barnes who is a casting director and Uh you've met her she is casting it so she suggested me for it um, and then I read for it and got it. And so, what character are you playing? Mary Jo. Who was in the TV show? Annie Potts. Well, she's like the funny, yeah, like sassy, yeah, I have some like, really tell fun it like lines. it is. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll be super fun. And um, yeah, it runs for a month in Fayetteville. It's this beautiful theater. It's like this $35 million theater in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which like was not there when I went to school there. So, but last night I got on, we did a table read and I looked on. On a Zoom. On a Zoom. Okay. And I already knew this, but I just forgot she would be there because um, they also have like a co-director from the theater. And it's one of my college professors. Really? And I was oh like, my God. oh, hi. Because you were in the we... theater department. At... Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And she's moved on to be like a director of the of this big theater there. So... That's it, cute. It's very Did you random. Get along? It feels like the beginning of like a Hallmark movie. Like I go home to do. Oh like, my god, a... this is a Hallmark. <laughs> Why did you? Oh. wait. The only thing that's not. But I would be going home to do a Christmas play, not the and, designing one, and not reboot. to fall in love with someone. Well, because your I mean, husband is well, he's up in, in Canada. Canada. I can't be responsible. No, I'm just kidding. This, of course, this not. one is you go home. Okay, to not fall in love with someone. You go home because the guy is the, your husband is there, which is great storyline and completely unbelievable. But whatever you're saying, it's true. <laughs> you go home. You do the play, this, and it's your. And then the the professor or something. Mm, I need someone younger. Anyway, somebody. No offense. <laughs> Somebody in the play, she's sad for love. Okay. And because so you're more of a matchmaker because we don't want you to. We a Hallmark never in, encourages divorce. That's more lifetime. Right. Well, so you can't cheat on your husband. Right. If this was, if we want to do a lifetime version, you're. You're, I mean, Lifetime's I, going. A, I know you. You do podcasts about all these great Lifetime movies. Um, Tell them what your podcast is. It's Are You My Podcast. Okay. I love it. <laughs> and, and we do Married at First yes. on Friday. Oh, guys. good. Mm-hmm. Good. So I, I, um, but like sometimes they're, they've got some lesbian stuff going on. Some once in a while they touch a touch of lesbian, don't they? No. Um, Have we not seen that yet? Well, Lifetime, do a little. Yeah, do so a little. So there could lesbian. be a little something with like another cast member. If we're right. going to have you do the lifetime version, or what if I go back yeah. in the in the Hallmark version and um, one of my like best friends from high school, he's still single. Yes, and then I he's a widow. Like, Obviously, he's a widow. Yeah, you've never had kids, right? So then you get to be the mom. So I no, we're the same age. I went to high school. with No, him. you get to be the mom of his kids. 
No. He's a widow. We're making him a widow. I know, but I'm going to set him up with someone else from no, the I'm show. No, I'm back to you just oh, being to, uh, oh. being single and falling in love. Oh, okay. That's a better I just, let's it's get a better of, Hallmark let's movie. Let's get rid of John. Right. And, and then he doesn't need to be in the movie. And he doesn't he's got enough going on. Fuck. He's like professional football player. No, like why can't you have your one fucking thing? Yeah, that's okay, true. Okay, so you come <laughs> fall in love with the high school guy. Mm -hmm. He he's the director of the play. Oh. You, were, you were the king and queen of the theater department at Arkansas. Okay. He he wanted to marry you. Mm -hmm. Of course he but did. But you had big Hollywood dreams. Yep. And you left. Just like the song, um, uh, Mama's Fallen Angel by Poison. Oh. Stepped off the bus out into the city streets. Just a small town girl with a whole lot packed in a suitcase by her feet. You know. Yeah. You know it. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> anyway, he fell in love with someone. He has a beautiful family. She died. He's doing the play. And, um, well, we're very excited to announce uh, we actually have a Hollywood star who, he's like, what? Sarah, as if you do. Oh, it's always weird for people to act like they don't recognize each other. Like, we're all on Instagram. Sarah? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I haven't been I'm your lover. looking at I'm you your lover. on Facebook for forever. Oh, sorry. Oh, um, your college lover, okay? Yeah. Sarah? Um, Tony? Um, wow, I had no idea. This was supposed to be um, Sarah Paulson. Yes, yeah, she got COVID. Oh. Yeah, so... They cast me. Oh, geez. Yeah. So, um, wow. Um, well, I mean, you can play the part. I yeah. Mean, remember, we did that great comedy together when we were uh, in the theater department. Yeah, you were so I'm, funny. You could I'm do... the director now at this $35 million theater. How did I not know that? I looked at the sheet, and I saw your name, and I just didn't the put it together. The other director got COVID. Oh, that's why. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I see. Oh, my God. This is amazing. COVID fallouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh my God! COVID co-stars. That's the name of the Hallmark movie. Oh my God! <laughs> just to put it, just to get one positive thing out of it, because I yeah. know it's really sad. Um, okay. All right. Well, we are excited about your play. Yeah. We're thank all going to go see it. We're all going to fly down to co to Arkansas <laughs> to COVID. Keep us posted. But <laughs> I I'm very excited because I talked to um, Deandra from Real Houses of Dallas. Oh yeah. And she was talking about that recently. She was on the table read last night. I don't know if she's doing the show or committed oh, okay. to it or if she was uh, just helping out for the table. I have no idea. She'd be but perfect she, if it, she or was maybe super funny. or hopefully it'll, it's a big hit. It'll be one of those things that's in several cities. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that would I be think cool. That, yeah, she was very funny. Let's talk about Britney Spears. Okay. You know, good news. The dad's finally out. Mm -hmm. She has this good lawyer. But the dissecting of the Instagram, I, I think I'm out. I think I'm like over it. I cannot figure this chick out. No, I know. And it's, I mean, I mean people are, it, there's so many theories. It's like, no, it's not her. And then, oh, she's sending us a message. And so I can't. I can't keep up because I'm, uh, I'm gonna, 100 years old. But I, I'm going to talk about the latest one. Okay. It's her in bikini pants, white bikini pants, red boots, and she's covering her boobs. Mm -hmm. Now, the previous one was that she thinks that her face has gotten thin because her whole body's getting thin. But first, when she gets thin, it starts with her legs, and then she, she gets thinner in her stomach, then she gets thinner, and then she's thinnest in her face. Mm. Okay? So yeah. that was kind of weird. Okay? And now it's eight... Swipe, swipe to the right photos of her just holding her boobs, which body looks great, looks great. Yeah, she's covering like enough that boobs that Instagram keeps it on. And she says this, you know, no, I'm not pregnant. Um, I have boobs in these Who pictures. Who said she was pregnant? I oh, guess because, because her boobs, boobs looks are... big. Um, no, I'm not pregnant. I have boobs in these pics because I devoured food. Have, I mean, okay. No, what? I have a gut because I devour yeah, food. Yeah, when you have like it's a huge Thanksgiving dinner, you're not like, let me go in the back and adjust my bra strap. You're like, let me unbutton my pants. <laughs> I wish that it went to my boobs. Um, she just says, I want you to understand my thoughts on exposing my skin. It's my opinion. It's quite twisted, the immediate response of when any woman is hot and they want to shed a layer. I'm not talking in a strip club or performance, just on a practical scale of being in your car and realizing you're wearing a stupid long sleeve shirt in the summer. Now, we, in her defense, she hasn't been able to drive for 13 years. Right. Okay. 
The immediate reaction to any woman who does feel this after shedding a layer is, damn, I feel better. Therefore, you think you look better. I've had a billion shows where I've done that, and to my horror, oh, well, sometimes I don't look great. Well, every photo I've seen her on stage looks great. Yeah. Too many times, and it's embarrassing as fuck. But in my imagination, it felt great. I mean, I don't want anybody to see the big dimple on my ass, but I feel like performing made me too self-conscious about my body, and that's not attractive. Anyways, I bet you're wondering why I expose my body now. Well, it's because I was born in this world naked, and I honestly feel like the weight of the world has been on my shoulders, and it's made me view myself that way. So anyway, I'm happy to, you know, I'm just as a mom. Right. Of teenage boys, Mm -hmm. in which she has teenage boys. I mean, look, I know there's moms of teenage boys that have only fans that are porn stars that are webcam girls that you have to pay the bills, you know. But hopefully, maybe your kids don't know that that's what you do. I think. Or they don't see it, yeah. I mean, I had to take, I had to have Brandon take a photo of me. Um, I asked him to. I was in a one piece bathing suit in my pool on these Lisa Renna lips. Oh, I that saw that. Thought, well, so he thought, thought it was, it was a vagina, and he was like, this is disgusting. This is so <laughs> wrong. This is so inappropriate, Mom, that you're making me do this. And I go, just let me just take the photo. You're like, just do it, you know? And did I, he ever, How did it come out? That and Did he, like... He just... Did, because they're big pink lips. Right. So, I mean, he thought it was a vagina. Did uh, you finally clear it up? Float. I go, say, it's lipstick. She has a lipstick line. Um, but then when I looked at lips. it, I go, it does look like a big fat vagina. <laughs> <laughs> it, now that you say it, I, I mean, I did see the photo and it did kind of look like you're yeah. floating on a post. Um, <laughs> so I am going to be a little judgy in that I don't love that she's doing this. But then I, again, is it her? We still don't know. I know. It's, I, it's, it's very, it's, now who is her conservator now because the dad stepped out? I know she has a good lawyer. She still has it, but he's just not the person in charge. So someone else which is I in just charge. Think, I do think she's going to have some type, in my opinion, of some, but it's going to be a very, and I've been saying this, people have conservatorships. It's a lot more lenient than what she had. Right. So even if she still sort of needs it, and she needs to be on medication every day, which a lot of functioning Americans are. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hopefully it'll just be more about like the money and not her day to day life controlling it. Is yeah, what I think. Like just is... like let me just keep your money in check, which a lot of a lot of people have a money manager, or whatever. But um, but this was interesting. Someone, this has been going around, and forgive me because I don't know who to give a credit to, but someone noticed that she had posted a quote recently where she tagged kittenish and someone was like oh i wonder why she tagged kittenish well kittenish is jesse james decker do you know who she is yeah she her it's her bikini line okay but it had nothing to do with bikinis and she is very close to jamie lynn spears britney's sister who they're at odds right right now. right so who and both of them are still very close to Lou Taylor, who was the original person who put her in the conservatorship. So is are they still controlling the Instagram? Oh, like they tagged Jesse James yeah, Decker's let me just, company. Let me just throw you a bone, girl. Let me I let me just add this to How my sister's post. How would they not post. think somebody would notice that? Well, someone did. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, yeah, there's a I lot. I know people do like there. There's there's people that do like deep dives, and they have so many theories. And oh it's my like, god! I read about it all, but I don't understand. Or it's just I can't a, figure it's out. It's just what it a is. lot. Anyway, her body looks great. Yeah, you know. It does. Um, look, I, I, some people just, some people are just. I need the attention right now. I'm. I look good in this thing, and I'm gonna throw it up, and I'm gonna feed it. I'm a, like. I was watching Shaw's the other day, Shaw's of Sunset, and this one guy, he, he has a fiancé, but he, she always catches him DMing chicks and talking dirty to them. But there's no evidence that he's ever met them. And so they're talking about it. His name's Mike. And he's like, the, you know, I have a, I have a, I'm not, it's like an addiction, but it's an addiction to attention. I'm on, like, you didn't want to say I'm on this reality show because they're filming him. But I'm on this reality show, and it's a thrill for me to know at, like, 40, and after being on the show for 10 years, I can still pull these hot girls from Instagram who will then engage with me. Right. And send me nudes, or I, or tell me I'm hot. And they're like, but you have this girlfriend, and he's like, 
yeah, I, I need to like go to a rehab. And I'm like, do you imagine how many people probably have to go to like thirsty Instagram rehab? Yeah. Because it's just a version of an addiction at that point. If, if, yeah. if it's like you can't stop it and it's ruining your relationship, then. And then the other guy goes, yeah, I can't stop it either. I just love these people that DM me on my Instagram all the time. Oh my God. One time someone DM John. <laughs> and she's like, like yeah. a new, like a, like a topless photo. Yeah. And he like panicked and threw his phone at me and was like, look what I got. Just so you know, I got this. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so cute. Yeah. And then I wrote her and I was like, my husband showed me this. We had a good laugh, which is so like bitchy and so good. I, oh, is it though? Or is it just childish? I no, that's just the perfect it. thing. Yeah. I was like, because it's not like my husband showed this to me, you dirty heart. You were yeah. just like, we had a good laugh. Like, we're good. Yeah. Not go find another. There's a million NFL players that will cheat on their 100%. wife. hundred percent. So There's plenty just of them. know that this ginger is mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go another round, Hands girl. Hands off the ginge, lady. Check it. Go to Lamar. <laughs> go or go to uh, what's the other guy? Tristan. Go to Tristan. <laughs> he will definitely respond to your DMs. Wait. Do you think I just thought of this? Do you think maybe her these photos are her feeling a little bit of freedom? Yeah, I mean, I get it too. Fact. Like I can yeah. do whatever I want, but but she's been posting a few of No, there was a bunch in a row and they were like the same photo shoot and I know people were like, "I'm confused. You just yeah. posted this." So, anyway, who knows. The reposting stuff, I don't know. Like I've talked to people that tell me things and then oh, quite honestly, I'm like, I'm just kind of exhausted. Like I just kind of <laughs> I'm like Hey, I'm good. I hope you come up with some, some new music. I hope you have fun. Oh, I hope you I hope like she gets get to, to do whatever she wants. I hope to see you at a nail shop in Thousand Oaks one day. Yes, like, just doing whatever she yeah, wants. Yeah, just let's get a, like a Chinese chicken salad and fucking <laughs> just talk. And I'll be like, girl, was it what's you? Going what's going on? Clear was it you air. on your Instagram or yes. not? Like, shit, I'm for you. Come on, Juicy Scoop, girl. Come on, Juicy Scoop. Let's do a, let's do a tour. Okay. <laughs> okay. Erica Jane, um, this is, okay, lots on Erica Jane. Yes. But I thought you might enjoy this part. There's like 12 stories about Erica Jane today. Erica Jane of Real House of Beverly Hills. She, as you know, is a, like, pop star kind yes. of created. People gave her songs, gave her, you know, she had all the best of the best, and she would kind of made it on the gay circuit and then blew up with Housewives. I mean, in that, you still never heard, you, I still have yet to hear any of her songs on 102.7, which right. I listen to like popular music, but I guess they play it in the clubs, apparently. Right. Okay. Do you remember the song? We like the cars, the cars, cars that, that go boom. boom. We're Which... Heather and Sarah, and, and we, we like, like to boom. boom. You know the yes, song? Yes, I it's do. It's Tigra and Callie or something. Yeah. Tigra and Tiggy. And these are two girls, and they're adorable. Yes. And, like, so that was their song. I totally remember that song. I've forgotten about it until just now. And anyway. I love it again. It's been out for 25 years. Yeah. She did a song a while ago, and someone just, like, called Tigra and Tiggy, or whatever her name is, <laughs> and said, Erica Jane is a song that's like, I like the cars, the cars that go boom, <laughs> boom. The I like the cars, the car, like, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, pretty, pretty just close. The, just the um, the older lady version of it, like the deeper voice. Let me and think the... what it would be like. It's like, let me do our kids with. I like the cars, the cars that go boom. I like the cars, the cars that go boom, boom. She doesn't go. I like the cars, the cars that go boom. I'm Erica, Erica Jane, Jane, and I, I like, like the boom. boom. Now, if she did that, <laughs> that's obvious. Obvious. But these things are tricky lawsuits. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people are like, what did she know about Tom's taking the money from the victims? This one, 100%, she was not like driving in a car, heard uh, that song, right. went into the studio, in my opinion, told her guy, steal this song from Tigra and Tiggy, whatever. Trina and Kelly? What is it? I can't it's remember. It's TJ and Te something. <laughs> and... and and let's, you know, because these girls are now on, who when, who knows what they're doing. I yeah. mean, they're obviously not performing anymore. They have no clue. So whoever wrote the song, you Is know. the one that wrote But that person off. was probably paid for the gig and got the fuck out. And so she's going to be. But at no point was Erica Jane like, do I, you know, I'm a grown how... woman. Do I really have to say I like the cars that go boom, boom? Like, Well, I think we she just... was just whatever they told her to do, told her to dress, told her that she was like, you're the experts. You've worked with Janet Jackson. You've worked with <laughs> Pussycat Dolls, Pat the Puss. You know me. 
I right. like I like the cars. The cars that go boom. What, Erica? Let's throw that in a song. And you don't like the cars that go boom. You go you're you're driving like two hundred thousand really smooth like Maserati cars. Yeah, so she doesn't even. So, and who wants a car that goes boom boom? That's like a like a bouncing car, right? Yeah, she does. Like, she obviously she yeah she likes the cars the cars that run smooth. What if she said yeah. that? Yeah, I like the cars the cars that run smooth <laughs> Maserati and Porsches and I like the booms. I like the smooths. <laughs> God, why did they do a born brand? <laughs> that would have at least saved her the headache of. So is she being? Are they suing her? They're. Su they, I don't know if they're officially suing. They're like, you know, it would have been nice to get some credit. Nobody knows that song. It's not. It's I expensive do. to be me. Oh. Eh, 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 eh. That one, thanks to me, because I say it at least once a week on right. the show. That one is kind of a hit, and there was another. You one. should get there's, compensated there were like for three, that. Song. There's like three that are way more memorable than that one. That was right. like one when she got a when got a booking and she had to do at least seven songs. She was like. Can we just do something? Uh, let me just drive over. Drive over. Right. Do you like cars? <laughs> <laughs> cars go, hmm. Yeah, make a song about that. Yeah. So that's what I think happened. Meanwhile, her husband, uh, to ex-husband to be, his law firm, because of all the bankruptcy that's happening, because they took right. all this money from these victims that they won the money, and then instead of going, you won $12 million, here you go, he was like, you won $12 million, here's a million, I'm gonna give you the 11 later. And then they're like, can we have the 11? And he's like, it's gone and I have Alzheimer's. So that's in a nutshell what's happened. Okay. So they're like, well, we gotta sell everything, your house, everything. So there's all this stuff at the law firm that they're selling and there's an online auction. So Peter is <laughs> bidding on a few things. Stop it. Yes. What? We had such a hard time deciding. Cause I didn't want any like bad mojo. You know, like in my office. But um, I don't want to say what we're doing because I don't want someone to jump. Oh, I will say we're doing one bottle of wine, which I think we'll get. Okay. Why? why? Oh, like an just, expensive. Like, yeah, oh. just to say we had a bottle of wine from it. Right. But the other thing I want would be for the office, but I don't want to tell them. When do we know if we want it or not? If you guys promise, That's a long time if you guys option. promise not to try to steal this from me, should we tell them when I want? Okay, I won't tell you what it is. Okay, but Will you I tell hope me afterwards? I'll tell you after, and I'm okay. hoping that we get it. I want you to. Can you go back in and just up it a little? Because now I really want it. What if you tell me and then I go on and I outbid you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you would know it's his. It's not like, you know, like there's things that people really want, like those statues of like the Lady of Justice, right. like the irony of this. Yeah. And then there's like a painted fa of his face, and you know, but. I, I thought this is actually a function thing that I'd work use in the office. And I could say, by the way, this is from, you know, the thing I've spent a lot of episodes talking about. Right. Hmm. But what is for sale is yeah, tell me what um, is for sale. Oh. He there was a box of lingerie ready to go, most likely for his mistress, because she he cheated on her all the time too. That is also in the office and being sold. Like used lingerie? Bravo, bravo, ducking bravo on Instagram found it. And it's Asian prova, pro, how do you say that? That's like a very expensive lingerie. Yeah, provocateur. Pro, yeah, provocateur. And um, and it's like red lacy, two pairs of red lacy pants and a top and like what looks to be like a little skirt. I don't, those ones that have the little slit. Like the crotchless. Oh, it's like a slit so you don't have to take off your underwear to screw. Yeah, I don't like, I don't Ugh. like. I'm always, and afraid, Mr. I'm always afraid something's going to get caught. I'm talking, there. Erica. <laughs> You're, something would get caught? Yeah, like a, like a labia or something. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. It just seems like it would be uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I've that's never what's tried sexy it. is that you keep it on. Well, can't you just move them to the side? I mean, I'm going like to move it to the side. Yeah, girl. that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> or like in a bikini. Yeah, after a nice day at the pool. Hmm. Nice conversation. Anyway. Peter just turned it's, around. It's wrapped into the box. It's ready. He just had it like, he just had it ready to go for somebody. That's and never disgusting. gave it to someone. Whether it was for Erica or not, it's clean. It's got tags. It's not been used. Um, it, I this mean, is going to go think... for a lot. Because now it's like all over the, so now like someone is going to want to say, I got it. Like, I think. Right, Peter, and it's new. Can you see if you can get me that? <laughs> <laughs> Next time you're in here, you're going to be like, I'm actually wearing Erica Jane's crotchless panties. FYI. Okay. 
Okay, this was a disturbing thing that was went viral on TikTok. I don't know if you heard about it. It's this dad and his nanny, oh. who's about 20, that are doing like the dirty dancing le- attempted leaps. And they put it on TikTok. And it, it appears like the mom that this girl works for, the couple that she works for, is filming it. And he's grabbing her, like, you know, to lift her, like, right yeah. under the tit. She's wearing just, like, a college T-shirt and, like, boxer shorts. Doesn't look to be wearing a bra. She's a thin, cute, blonde girl. And laughing and giggling and then, like, leaping. I think there's a toddler jump involved, a lift, like a dirty dance lift. So this isn't the one where they, like, wrap. I've seen a, a TikTok thing where they wrap around a body. This one's maybe just like they're the, trying to do with right. a nanny. You mean? I, it wasn't no, with a nanny. This is all about okay, this, that they made it clear when they posted that this is their nanny and oh, what a fun like life they have. No, I don't like this. Makes me uncomfortable. Now, would this make the Lifetime movie? This would be, yeah. And then I think what, she'd have to walk in on it. She would not be filming it, the lead of our Lifetime movie. Or she'd film it, and then while she was filming it. She'd start to notice like yes. a connection between them, and then she'd snap and fucking kill the nanny. That's what. That's the Lifetime movie. What? Or, or the husband, or both of them. Wait, have you ever seen a Lifetime movie where the mom, like this is what Lifetime should do? Just switch it up. It's always the nanny that's the freak. Right. What if it's really the mom that's the murderer? Yeah. It's never the mom. You're right. It's always like the nanny upstairs. The nanny yeah, she down, should the kill nanny both. She should kill both of them for sure. That is, um, yeah, I mean, if you guys had a nanny and would you ever feel like a 23-year-old nanny back in, you know, back when your boys were younger? We did. I, we had triplet nannies. Okay. They we were did. blonde triplets that all helped with the kids. Oh, that's convenient. But here's the thing. They, like, came in the day during the summer and stuff. Like, there was never, like, I'm gone for a week and she's living in taking care of the baby that needs to be breastfed. Like, it was never like that. It was always like when kids were little, we're friends with the dad, and you know, the dad's met. And it was, but but when I would tell people I have blonde triplet nannies, they'd be like, what's what's wrong with, like, you're crazy. But I'm like, no. what, do you think my husband's like a fucking pervert? No. And also, I, do you think that, but, that, do you don't you think the triplets that I chose that go to Louisville and are, come from a wonderful ham, do you think they want to fuck Peter? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> You're like, give them. <laughs> like, give them some fucking credit. Like, he's her dad's friend. Oh, I'm so excited. Heather has a comedy game tonight. Let me snuggle up to Peter after we play Scrabble with the kids. Like, that's never, ever going to happen. No. <laughs> well, could you imagine, though, ever filming, like, back then, like, Peter dancing with one of them? It just seems, never. It, it just seems weird. It would make me uncomfortable. It would be so weird. And also, it's like, there's going to be people that say, it's fine. They're buddies. They're close to Also, like, who's watching this? the kid when you're fucking putting your pussy around his neck? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. It's just, if I'm the mom of that nanny, I'd be like, honey, I don't Ugh. like that you're doing the dirty dancing dance with the guy that you work for. I feel like that doesn't add up to things that are going to work out. We just out. said a nanny that stole from us. Really? Yeah, just stole money from us, and we put a camera in there and found out. Like I was the... devastated. I wanted to warn her that Peter had put the camera in there. I wanted to be like, I know you're stealing, but there's a sting operation happen, so maybe don't steal tomorrow because I don't want to try to find someone else. And then my sister said, you can't you can't go behind your husband's back. You can't she, blow your own sting if operation? If she's stealing, but I felt so bad. That she was going to get caught. Well, what was she stealing? Like how Hundreds much? of dollars. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars. From where? From, like, well, I noticed I had a couple gift cards that I had bought for people that were missing. And then Peter's like, you're disorganized. And I thought, I noticed some cash was missing. And he was like, you're disorganized, you know. And then he was like, Ooh, wait, I noticed you. I have some cash missing from, like, in my office, desk office, you know. like Why under, didn't you say well, you're disorganized to him? Why did he He's blame like, I'm you? Just, I'm like, I, I, yeah, you're right. Well, that's that's why he has the upper hand in the marriage still. <laughs> so then, so then he put the cameras. He put these little cameras in, and he, you know, and it was immediate. Like he left. I left for Chelsea lately. He left for work, and checked the cameras 
No, no. Then no, we didn't have that ring situation back was then. Was it like a pet camera, like one of those? It was something that he like got, and then cap, I'm sure he returned after. <laughs> I'm sure he returned it after, and we didn't have to keep it. <laughs> so then he came home at like four, and he checked it, and it happened like minutes after we left. She went right into the office, opened it while talking on the phone. I'm like, "Where's baby Brandon?" Like, and then started to count what he had, and it was like seven hundred, and she took about two seventy of it. How did she think that, that you guys aren't going to notice? We hadn't been noticed. I, I've been trying to tell Peter it was happening. He kept just saying, I'm disorganized. So we, we had, she's probably heard him say, you're so disorganized. And she's probably like, oh, there's this family that, you know, I don't know. How much do you think she made off with? Oh, maybe like, oh, maybe just like a thousand or something. That's over still the a time. lot of money. No, like I think just... she was getting more brazen. Like, I don't think, I think it was probably very little in the beginning. And she heard him berating you, and then she was like, "Oh, this guy's never going to investigate me." Yeah, he's never going to investigate. It's always going to be Heather's fault. Everything is. Yeah, and yeah. then then she made the big mistake. Yeah, she went for Peter Stash. Yeah, and then he took it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> when it was like hundred dollar Target gift card, he's like, "What? You just misplaced it." Um, Pete Davidson single again. Oh. He broke up with a girl from Bridgerton. Which one was? Th- what was? Oh, the and he's one- getting tattoos removed. By the way. Oh, what, he why? has so many to do. Oh, he does have a lot of tattoos. That would feels like it would be a process. I think it's just like I think he probably wants to be a more serious actor, and it's just so it's a, they're so hard to cover up for makeup artists, and right? Then the, you can only play so many parts, and you know. true. Um, what's the girl from Bridgerton? Like, I don't see any was... on his neck. He must have removed all the neck ones. What's her name? Um, Fo- Phoebe. Oh, Phoebe De- Deniver. Yeah, they're over Deniver. with. He dates a lot of women. A lot. Everyone's famous. Yeah, he really gets like big famous stars. I hope he doesn't go to... after Olivia Rodriguez next. Why do you think that? Is Just that your prediction? Because it's like singing, but she's too young. I think. Hopefully, that'd be creepy. How old is she? Well, didn't she just get her driver's license? Oh, then yeah, no, you won't. Do. Okay, no, yeah, let's. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how old anyone is. I just think which everyone's... Brandon got it. Brandon got his permit. He did. So we, I went driving in the parking lot of the abandoned. Uh, mall in Topanga the one that's like got Ruth Chris and nothing else and um and then Peter took him around the block and how did he do I said how did you do with that he goes pretty good I came close to one parked car but I think that was it (laughs) so it's a little scary that is scary does it make you nervous we have a lot of months to practice before he's eligible before he even turns 16 right so a lot of months which we're going to need okay (laughs) yeah okay (laughs) um P- Bachelor in Paradise is back, yes. and David Spade was the host. And this, I like this show. It's like fun. It is. Um, I missed it the most during COVID, like the yeah. when they couldn't film that one. I was like, that's the one show. I, I, I didn't care as much about missing The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. When the, first... This this is fun because it's like the people get, and there's like lots of chances of love, not just the one. Right. Um, this one guy, Joe the Grocer. Yeah. The, he's back. And they're like, do you have a grocery store? And you just have a grocery store? He's like, no, now I just dance and do videos. So I guess that's him doing TikTok. Oh. Anyway, he met a girl. <laughs> so do they call on... him Joe the TikToker now? I mean. <laughs> he met a girl two years ago. Kendall. Yes. Right? I don't remember her. But anyway, I they think... they just broke up. They were together for two years. Yeah. Probably once she thought, okay, well, at least he has a grocery store and he works. You know, and now he's got rid of his grocery store. And he was and like, now I'm just going to dance. dance. And she's and like, do oh, TikToks. shit. But did you see him get sad last night? Did yes, you catch I loved that part? it. Yeah. I loved when he was almost crying. Yeah, it that made was me sad. so good. And he was like, and they're trying to like all the guys are himself. into what's her name? The the little. She's very little. It's my theory know. of why littles do better than talls. Because they're spinners. Because they can do this. They could spit on the dick. <laughs> they're just little. They're just like less intimidating. Yeah. Because she's so tiny. Which Peter, one? Peter, you remember this girl. She was on Matt's season. And Matt's like 6'5", and he really liked her. What is her name? Was she the one with the um the, the long brown hair? She's and like, her name starts I, with an A? No. I did not think that she was that great looking. But then when she put on makeup, she kind of glammed herself up, and she was very, very tiny. Oh, here she is, this girl. But I don't remember her name. See this one down here. Oh, oh, she's so pretty. I think she's really pretty. She's but very she pretty little, in like right. a non-done generic way. So I think that's kind of cool. But and she has a very nice personality. But I like the fact that natural. like the first three guys, but well, of course I they, sounded creepy just now. They, I like when they're natural looking. 
<laughs> but they, the first three guys, they probably planned it where they, those three all said they were into her. So then it was like she was being besieged. Right. But, um, yeah. So that he's like sad and crying. And he says he wish he hadn't come. Because he said he talked to one of them and he goes like it was like talking to Kendall. And then they yeah. started to cry. And then so I want so she must have broken up with him. Right. Or was he just like sad that there is he just he said it was a great relationship, relationship. But he said but that we weren't on the same track of what we wanted to do in life. Probably she wanted him to have a job <laughs> and he wanted to do TikTok dancing and go back on Bachelor in Paradise. I mean, so much of these breakups, like a sweet guy, so though. much of these breakups that happen in this world has to be that the guy doesn't go back to the law firm. He doesn't want to go back to whatever he did before. Right. He gets a little taste of this and you can't blame people like, you know, they can just not, so we, they can just not have a boss. And yeah, do, the uh, other show people are talking about is F Boy Island. Mm -hmm. And I watched a couple episodes because people are talking about it. And I watched an episode last night. Under your under your direction. Okay, so basically, what <laughs> I they put in an hour, it's three girls competing. Yes, which is kind of cool because they're kind of friendly with each other. They all have like the same dress on at the beginning. I thought that like, was I thought that was designed by like a stylist so that they wouldn't be like it was almost like they were like like be, when remember when Beyonce had the three girls and the mom would make like a similar outfit for everybody. Yeah, Destiny's that, Child. <laughs> it was like that. That, it, it was like all the same designers, but in different colors and a little bit off. Definitely, because like it all want... had like a like like one had like a, a shoulder strap that was split, and the other one was like split down the middle. And yeah, the other, they like had a like... slutty bridesmaid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're gonna do yeah. like, hey, you guys could all just pick from this line at Fashion Nova. Yeah, like you could go. But it has to be neon. It mm -hmm. has to be neon because we're all gonna look tan and uh, and so anyway, it's kind of it's kind of fun. I, okay, so these guys all come, and look, I mean they're. You know, I'm not attracted to any of them because they're all so young. It's creeping me out. Right. But like, and they're all very like muscular and douchey looking. But 12 can identify as nice guys and 12 identify as F boys. I never really understood the expression of F boys. I've had people explain it to me because when a woman goes, he's an F boy. I'm like, so I, I thought it was supposed to be empowering. I thought women was like, he's an F boy. Like, I'm going to fuck him and toss him. But no, they're saying he's gonna fuck me and toss me. Right, and they like. So I then I was like, oh. And they try to like. I think they try to go after women with money or something too. Did I just add that part in? I think you add that part oh. in. I just feel like F. I thought F boy was like a, a term that we didn't do anymore. But I'm, I I'm also again out look, of. Look, I come out from the, the day of one girl did use the word player, but we called these guys like in college and stuff and yeah, post college. Players. He's a player. Right. Meaning he's super charming. He it ha, is very confident, knows how to talk to a woman, will buy you a drink. And so you immediately think he likes you that much. But then you're like, wait, he is this suave. Remember Rico Suave? Yeah. Rico Goes Suave Rico would suave. be an F boy. Okay? Right. So they're so good at it that you really can't trust that they're ever going to change their player ways. And it's all about conquering and not really finding love. Because one of them, was it this one too? The Garrett guy, was he the one that told like a sad story? Yes. And that was brilliant. Yeah. So this Garrett and then guy, later he's like, he's kind of admitting that he already he's an F boy, right? Now is it F-B-O-I or B-O-Y? No, it's F and yeah. then B-O-Y. Okay, I thought it was like a fun like boy. Oh. <laughs> This is so I sound like I'm a hundred. So okay. um and so basically what is kind of fun is just then they like have to get rid of their they do their bottom two. Right. And then they go, Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the and then the before the guy goes, he says what he is. And last night the first, yes. I watched the first episode and they got rid of two nice guys. So now they're only down to ten nice guys already. And I have to say there was one that was a firefighter who was also named Garrett, and I thought Okay, wait a minute. Because every firefighter, everyone wants to marry a firefighter, right? Yeah. Cops hate firefighters for that because firefighters bring in more tail and everybody loves them and everyone wants a firefighter and no one knows. No, they're just as cheating as the cops, but whatever. So, so I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This firefighter is an F boy. He must get so many girls that want to marry a fireman, you know? And I said, but why would he go on national TV and tell the world that he's an F boy. Oh, of all the shows to it. choose, why would you choose this? But I think they just sign up for these shows and the producers kind of talk them into how it's funny and, and they don't really think about the long term effect of you will you are forever gonna be pegged 
I'm an F boy. Three, four years from now, when a girl wants to bring you to her family and her cousin is like, that's fucking Garrett F boy from the first season of <laughs> F boy Island. Uh, you are not marrying him. I never thought of that. Yes. That's... Like it's hor- You're ruining your life. Right. You can't. Like, why anyway, are you outing yourself? That's the firefighter like going... said he was nice. Yeah. And he did seem nice. I thought, sh- I thought that too. I come from like a family of firefighters and they're all very nice people. Okay, they're my, not F boys at my all. My grandfather I was hope. the fire chief of Long Beach, New York. Okay. And was he an F boy? <laughs> <laughs> he married my he married my grandmother who was ten years older than him and he didn't know because she lied when she got to Ellis Island and she said she was nineteen when she was twenty nine. Oh. And then she had some, you know, old Good eggs skin. that worked. Yeah. And um but I think he was a boozer. Rest in peace. I mean my dad finally kinda told me. Right. He'd he'd get drunk. Um but I mean I think he was a good dad. He was a good firefighter. Yeah. I don't think they had any big fires back then. <laughs> they firefight. They do they it's a it's a rough schedule to be married to someone that's a firefighter, but Yeah. Um but yeah, you're right. He's branded. But now he told everyone he was a good guy, so now he's the opposite. He's I mean, going to have God, he got every kicked woman off. He in... got kicked off right away, so he didn't bone anybody. He didn't Garrett the firefighter is oh my god. He's probably pulling it in left and right now. Yeah, unless Whatever. he has to go and gets called in for fire season. Well, right. I mean, come on, where are you a firefighter, dude? Like, we need you. Anyway, this guy who told the sad story, the other Garrett, he said, I was adopted as a Russian orphan with my sister who was deaf. Right. And But I still have, like, some abandonment issues. And so she's like, I know he's not an F boy. He's such a nice guy. And then he's like, hey, hey, that's the story I tell all the time. Nothing gets the pussy wet like a Russian orphan. And you're <laughs> <No>. like, what? <laughs> Nothing gets the pussy wet like a Russian orphan. But he did. He was. But so then was he admitting that he's an F boy up front? Yes, he's because admitted. Because I thought from, we weren't supposed to know. No, they, they put it in the beginning that he is one. Oh, okay. So we I must have missed that. So I mean, it's just the host and the contestants that don't know. The host and the contestant. No, we don't we know. We know a couple. No, of we them. only know a couple. We don't know all of them. Okay. okay. They didn't go, these are the F boys, these are because then there's an element of surprise, but they let us know about a couple to keep so us. So we can intrigued. watch them be yes. Yeah. Yeah. He um and then what was he on TMZ for? What did he do? Someone walked up to him and was like, Do you feel bad? I guess he got kicked. Obviously he didn't end up with somebody. Because I haven't watched the whole thing. I don't no. know if it's all out yet. Yeah. But He's out and about and pretty excited to be being stopped by TMZ. So I, I really enjoyed um, when they kicked off the first F boy and she goes, F boy, get. Or she's she like, goes, F boy, F bye. F bye or something. <laughs> and she's like, get yeah. out of here. I was like, what's going on? It's so stupid, but I love it. It's funny. It's entertaining. Yeah. Okay. This is a TikTok challenge that's killing me. And baller alert, it's a Instagram I follow. Yeah. They're posting it. And it's these young girls with either their moms or grandmothers, and they're trying to say that um, they're up for a scholarship and they have to do a video. And this, I've seen, this one has 1.6 billion views. This is the best. This is with this grandmother, and she's sitting there, and she's like, the girl's like, this is my grandma, and I'm hoping to get this $100,000 scholarship. And so, and the grandma's just like, yeah, I'm going to obviously help my granddaughter get this thing. And so she tells, like, why she deserves it. And, yeah. and then she goes, and um, it's about the person that I'm, it, it inspires me the most, and that's my grandma. And the grandma's thing. And she goes, so I just want to tell you um, a little backstory. When my grandfather hit my grandmother over the head with a frying pan is when I knew that I wanted better for my life. And the grandma's just sitting there kind of just, like, she's just still. And then she's like, because um, that's the way it was, because when my mo- grandmother was a prostitute and running the streets, my grandpapa was her pimp. And... And the woman's just staying there for a really long time, not saying anything. And then all of a sudden, the grandma's like, I ain't no fucking prostitute. <laughs> and she just screaming at her. And the daughter's like dying laughing. And she gets up. She curses her granddaughter out. And oh, my God, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. I just saw another one with a mom where she said her mom was a prostitute. And the mom's like, I'm not, you're not telling them this, you know, I married, I was married to your father before I got pregnant with you, and then I divorced him after seven years, and now I've been with Thomas for 20 years, so fuck you, like, I'm not doing this, and it is 
They have no clue. It's oh my god! Hilarious. So they just make up a story and make they, they and wait like, for their parents' reaction. Yeah, they're just like yeah. But those back the challenges that you <laughs> you have your grandma and your mom there and you say that the like feel sorry for me because my mom was like a horrible prostitute, drug addict, horrible abused, whatever. And these women are like That's farther not true. like farthest yeah. from the truth. It is hilarious. It oh. is hilarious. I don't know what the challenge is called. I don't but... know what I'm going to do tonight. What, first, watch that or watch <laughs> the cat video that you starred in. in or a, the nanny. Eight years ago. Or the nanny wrapping her legs around. I don't um, think I want to watch that. If he'll... What do you think about the rumors of Jennifer Aniston dating David Schwimmer since they had that moment of uh, talking how they almost dated in the reunion off camera and they had this little chemistry and love for each other. It's funny how I was like, oh, I kind of like, I don't know why I would care, but all of a sudden I was like, God, wouldn't that be fun if it I was true? I want it to be. I think it I, could be. Do you think it could be? I think it could be. I think there could be people that work together on a comedy show from way back when and then find themselves in 2021. I mean, they both And just start great. like making rice together and just start hitting it off. I don't you know. You never know. You never know. You I, never know. I feel like I want it to be true. I, I think I totally want it to be true. She Why I don't know anything not? about his personal I feel life like though. Because his never... is always in the news. Her I mean hers is always in the news. I don't know anything about his. I don't know either, but I want to say he does not have children. And if he was married, he's certainly single. And I feel like if he was married, it wasn't a long right. marriage. And there's a very good chance he was never married. They, too. You said he doesn't have children. I believe he doesn't have I don't children. I so either. I feel like I know nothing about his personal life, which, I mean, I, I guess I don't like know why like I would. I feel like he, worked, but... but also, like, ran theater. And, like, by far, he looked the best of the guys. Yes. All the girls looked good, but he looked the best of the guys. Yeah, he looks good. I mean, Joey was cute, but, you know, he'd gained a few and whatever. But yeah, da- I see but, but David looked Exact, like the most similar. But they were all already hanging. They all already hang out. I feel like all the time there was always no, like no. The girls, no. The girls hang out. They don't see the guys that much. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess I've just seen a couple videos, but they were probably like posts. But they were probably from when they were doing the reunion. They would like right. finally have dinner. And then or Matt LeBlanc was like, "No one invited me to dinner." He was just like so angry and bitter. And they're just like, "Oh, Maddie, oh, stop it." <laughs> I want her to just be like calling like. <laughs> We, like a three way with like, I guess we can't even do three way calls now. I guess you can do three way FaceTime, right? Okay, three way oh. FaceTime. She's gonna call Lisa and Courtney Cox and be like, "Guys, there is a rumor going around that David and I are dating." And ah! oh, he came over for a margarita. It was one dry margarita. The dogs were there. It was a beautiful sunset. <laughs> And we were just, uh, I was going to have a quinoa bowl. He suggested a pokey. It was just so casual, so nothing. Just talking about his theater group, and he's doing great. And nothing happened. And now Fox News, of all people, are reporting this. <laughs> Fox News. I'd heard it a lot of other places, but like when I looked it up, yeah. it was Fox News. It's just funny. Um, I do think that... Um, it makes so much sense to me. I'm going to pray for it, and I'm putting it on my vision board. Okay. I enjoy the First fact of all, that you if it a was board just with a room- on it. Here's the thing. If it was just a rumor, so what? Gave you the idea. Right. You both now can get on the phone and laugh about the rumor. And then and it go, comes let's, true. What are you doing tonight? You know, let's have a drink. Let's make some uh, some ch- some tales, Kinoa. some people talk. Go out to Nobu. Yeah. Oh, yes. Not that they need anyone. Not that God she needs David, anyone else. I don't need the publicity. They're going to say I'm pregnant with your baby. No, they're not. You're 52. What, <laughs> David? <laughs> Um, okay. Did you can we real quick about three way yeah. calling? Yes. Did you ever like when you were in high school? <gasps> call I'm going to hell still. To, yeah, to get someone to say something. Like can if people you heard... even know? Everyone thinks these kids. You know, it's we're well, thank God we don't have social media when we were young. You know why people? Because our generation was meaner. Meaner for we sure. We're meaner than the girls today. Yeah, a hundred percent. Holy shit. We used to call like but it was usually to find out if somebody like somebody did say something mean and then we'd we would one of us would call that girl and get her to admit it while the other person heard it and then we'd be like, You're a bitch. We did three way so call kind of like a when did three way calling go away? I don't know. No, we would do it all the time. And then I also had a friend that like if she wanted me if she wanted to me to ask someone to a dance, because we had to ask guys for a girl, you know, the girl dances, I would do it for her as her. 
And I also broke up with people as her, and then she would listen in. Oh. Yeah. Wait, you would just pretend to be her and they wouldn't notice? Right, I could just do her voice. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Because she's just like, I can't, will you just do it? And she <laughs> like, would listen? And she would listen. And I'd be like, hey, um, I'm so sorry, but my ex-boyfriend, it's just, I need to give this another chance. It was always that. Because then I always felt that was like a softer blow. Like you right, can't like it's compete. not you. You it's... can't compete with history. Right. This, this guy's coming back. It's not you, it's my ex or whatever. Right. Right. Speaking of guys that came back, obviously Ben Affleck came back. And now, first of all, this photo is so gross of A-Rod. A-Rod has been scratched, diminished from her Instagram account. Oh, he's gone. There is not one photo that anyone can find of the two of them together. Now that is that's a, a lot of work. Not for her, right? Well, someone you know, yeah, for her social media person, yeah, Jerry, her guy or whatever right. is, you know, <laughs> deleting it all. Oh, I got you, girlfriend, Quaid. We don't need that asshole, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's he's de- he's deleting it all. And is her is does he still have his like photos? Oh, on that's his? a good question, Jerry. Can you find that out? No, I I don't know. I assume because there was one. Did you see the one um, that was like not long after they broke up, or maybe the right when J Lo and Ben started being seen in public, and yeah. A Rod took like a photo with his kids, and then like three empty seats. Wait, what at is the this? table? It was like oh really? Yeah, it and was... you think that was like a deliberate like? Wait, she doesn't have three kids. So she's oh or... because it's her and her two kids. Yeah. <gasps> And it was like a table. But and like, that was at, right after they broke up? It was pretty soon after. Ugh. And there was like three other place settings. Like, why would you keep the place settings that you would immediately, you wouldn't ever set the table for six people if there's only going to be, or however many, that, you know. But so, yeah, there was an empty spot to represent <laughs> each. <gasps> That's what everyone was writing, at least. They were like, this is like, oh or maybe the chairs were there. Anyway, it was just, it was very entertaining. Oh, cryptic, in, cryptic Instagram posts. That that's yeah. that is that's fun. It it's fun, fun to figure it out. Just make the people guess. Make the people guess. I've never done one. No. I, why would we? Like, what I would we know. get out of it? I don't know. Let's do one tomorrow. Um, Quentin Tarantino did a story. I kind of <gasps> loved the story. I did too. I, mean, I think was, this is the one I saw that I said yes. Okay. He did an interview, and he said that in school. Now Quentin is like mid fifties. Okay. So he's been around a while. So I just want to say, because I do think sometimes parents don't know, they make mistakes. Anyway, his mom, he was not a good student. And instead of doing his work, he would doodle and write these very creative stories. And the parent, the, the mom's a, a, a single mom, had him at 16, divorced his dad shortly after, and is trying to make ends meet. And she said... Um, you know, that's it with these dumb stories, Quentin. Like, you're, you're failing out of school. No more of these dumb stories. Do your schoolwork. And then and that day, he put in his head, when I become a successful writer-director, I will never give you one cent. You're not getting a Cadillac like Elvis gave his mom. You're not getting a home. Fuck you. So all these years later... Nothing. Nothing. He can hold a grudge. That is... Now... He also, there must be more to like their story too, because he said something about how if he could go back, he wouldn't even use that last name. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think he didn't get, I think there's more with his parents where they didn't get along. Cause he said, I think in this same interview, he's like, if I could go back, I wouldn't use Tarantino. Like he, so I don't, I think there's more. I just want to say this will never happen to me because I like support everything my kids do. <laughs> and I also think, you know, when your kid's not doing in school, doing well in school, of course you want to see that they're like an incredible artist or really into rap music or singing or whatever. Yeah. You want to be like, or great, because then you want to be like, oh, at least you have that. But you got to do a little of this. Like now we know to like encourage right. something creative that, okay, this is why, you know, your mind is so brilliant or that's what a parent tells yourself. Your mind is so brilliant, you can't concentrate on this boring shit. You know, well, now really, they you're really gonna... know. Yeah, yeah. Because they read this story and they're like, because he's like, I looked up his net worth after I read this story and it, I don't know, 142 million, like something crazy. So it's like, I mean, but also I would be I'm like, like you're I bitter, would... like, uh, but also you can't, as an intelligent 55 year old man, like have some empathy for your mom who's 16, who's raising you. Well, not I mean 16 when she had you, but. That was probably in her mid-20s when you were 10. 
He, and the and the school's saying that he's that you're not doing well, and she you're she's like, oh my god, you're never gonna get a job. She didn't have the wherewithal to be like, oh my god, keep writing those crazy stories because Pulp Fiction's gonna be a huge hit, and you're gonna be at the Oscars, and right. I'm gonna be sitting next with you. She didn't know that, right? I didn't read the part that he was like failing out of school at the time. I don't that know, he's failing. He's getting trouble. He's right. getting trouble for not doing his work. He wasn't interested, but, obviously, because he was brilliant. Brilliant, you know? yeah, but. He did, he he said he helped her like when she had taxes due or something. He was like, okay, he helped her out with Here that. Here's six hundred and twelve dollars. Yeah, but can you imagine being like? Well, then they said I, every this day I'd be like, article you're said, wonderful. I yeah. write him handwritten letters. You're so talented. Can I have some fucking money? Like you don't. Know, you have to a be. Lot of money. You have to be classy about it too. So then she went and defended his right to deny her money. She's oh. smart. She wasn't pulling a Vanessa Bryant. Mother, horrible, like the, that mom who said all those awful things about Vanessa Bryant, you know? Oh, I don't Remember how, know. like, Kobe's, Vanessa's mom was saying, I didn't get paid for all my years of being oh, a grandma? Right. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> Such a very bizarre thing to say. Um, what did but his mom say? She, I, I didn't read the whole thing, but she said that she defended his right to deny her any of his riches due to her not supporting his screenwriting aspirations. She's smart because by saying that, now he's going to be like, you know, and I listened to Juicy Scoop, and maybe I need to just my mom. At least my mom Kick didn't her a hundred yeah, grand. Yeah, just like uh, buy her a condo in Florida. Yeah, come on, yeah. dude. Something. Um, okay, Barbara Streisand. She kind of said, "Oh, I wasn't that happy with the Lady Gaga Bradley Cooper Star Is Born remake because it lacked originality." And she originally heard that it was going to be the names that she was hearing thrown around to redo the movie was going to be like Beyonce and Will Smith. And my thing is, I loved the remake, but wait, I want to also see another remake with Beyonce of and Beyonce Will and Will Smith. Yeah, like this is a story that can we could do it in in the Latino community. We could do it. it oh, we could be true. so many different ways, so many different, and it doesn't all have to be music either. Like it could just. I love that idea of like he brought, he brings her in, he helps her, and then he becomes jealous when she becomes a bigger star. Yeah. And she loves him. She puts up with the cheating, the alcohol, the this, the that. It could all have different endings because the, that their That's ending true, was cause their I ending was one. different than Barbara's ending. Yeah. But it was similar. Yes, it was very similar. But I liked the similarities. But I want to see Beyonce and Will Smith. I'm putting that on my vision board. That I would wanted, be. I would watch that in a heartbeat. Her, yeah. I almost feel like maybe she's, she, I mean, she looks so young, but like maybe not. What is, um, who, who, wait, what did, what's the line that he always, he said, Bradley Cooper? I wish I knew how to quit. Oh, no, that's, no. that was from back <laughs> I just want to look at you, right? Oh, right, yeah. I just, <laughs> just want to take another look at you. Yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> well, then I mixed those two up. Anyway. I loved that movie, but uh, yes, you're right. They could just do and you like could just there was some original it. stuff, like when he peed at the award show. Yeah, there was a lot of. I think yeah. a lot of it was a, a like they changed the story. And when he was like mean to, like he was mean. He's like you're ugly when she was in the bathtub. Oh right. Like there was weird, different stuff that I thought was great, but okay. But, but Barbara, just like make this happen, or it doesn't have yeah. to be them. But I would love to see it in that world. Like in in like a you know like when even like a Cardi B and her, well, who's her dad her her baby daddy the, or her husband? Um, I like I always think, do they ever get jealous or anything? Right. Like I want to like Why I want to see one about a different. You and Peter? Oh well, just do it on podcasting couples. Why not? <laughs> and then you could be on the road and. Peter could be in there in the green room throwing things because he's tired of hearing all the applause and standing ovations for you, and he's getting angry and jealous. I'm I gonna, would watch that movie. I'm going to end on this, okay, Sarah. Oh, Sex and City, clues every day. Chris Noth is in bed with her. There's scenes of them in bed together, but there's also scenes of them going to a funeral. You remember when we would rewrite what Sex and City three was going to be? Yeah. We never imagined there would be another series. We talk about it at Chelsea all the time. I always said, Chris Noth has to die in order for her for, to get out there and date again. Right. And keep it going. Yes. Especially now that it's a series. I told Chris Noth that at a Christmas party he invited me to, and he never invited me again. <laughs> 
Maybe I didn't realize. Because he stole your idea and then he doesn't want to face you But I also didn't realize again. that that means like then you're not in it anymore. Oh. So, so I, he was like, I, oh, so he was like, why did you just kill me off we, in the big? Then we've heard, no, they get divorced and it's a big nasty divorce. It could be nasty divorce and he dies while they're getting divorced. Or it could just be that he dies and then everything you see with him is a flashback. True that. So you can easily still okay, be in a movie. Okay, then as... don't be mad at me, okay? Have you die and have you continue flashing back. Yeah, the dad and six feet still under work. was in the whole series because he died in the first episode and he was always in every okay. episode. So I still want to so, go to the Christmas party Chris, again. Chris, if you're listening, let her back at the Christmas party this year. <laughs> it's going to be a big bash because COVID was, you know, we had and no, everyone, no Christmas and, and last year. And back. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, where are your next shows, Sarah? I am going to be at the Sacramento Punchline this weekend, August 19th through the 21st. So to Fun. This, awesome. Yeah, so the Sacramento Punchline, uh, sarahcolona.com has the tickets. Um, please listen to Are You My Podcast. We do Married at First Sight, and then Wednesdays, it's kind of a whatever the fuck Wednesdays, we call it. And um, yeah. Oh, and get a Clutch Women bag. Yeah, the, I, football games and concerts are back. Well, concerts too, and I, you guys, I, 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 not to over. I really am passionate about this because it drives me flipping crazy. But everything, everyone thinks clear bag means you have to bring a clear bag, but you don't. You, most, almost every policy, double check. It says you can bring a small bag, which mine are exactly made for that size. They're nice bags, stain and water resistant. They'll last you for all your events and even comedy events are having them. Well, I, at Cobb's, yep. I saw these girls with these plastic bags. Yeah, and I'm like, had they gone to Clutch Women? They could have looked cuter in the photo Way. with their bag. Instead with of the, holding a Ziploc. And see their tampon. Yeah, this but is But congrats why. on still getting your period. I know. <laughs> but uh, do we need to see that at the Cobb's Comedy Club? No. And that's why, literally why I came up with the idea. Because I was like, I don't want my tampons out. So clutchwomen.com and Juicy Scoopers always get 15% off with Juicy Scoop. Love. Sarah, thank you for coming. Thanks, girl.